Thank you. Took me right to the place where I can ask my question for, we know, for clarity. We're off again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is about that alignment. And um, I, I know I can manifest, uh, but many times, well, I have been to a lot of other seminars and a lot of things that say that 90% of what you're doing is subconscious or unconscious. So again, I um, well, feel like I know well, what I want. But let's, Let us put this in a different context because we've been hearing people talking about this subconscious mind and we think it's time to, to finally explain that in a way that, that, that at least acknowledges the laws of the universe in the midst of the conversation. So what we, what we just said to all of you, and you got it, we felt you get it, is that you can stand in your place of, of living something unwanted and affirm until the cows come home, which is going to be a long time for most of you. <laughs> of what you want and you don't get anywhere because your words don't matter it's your vibration that matters so what whoever originally started talking about the subconscious mind may have been tapping into is that it's the vibration that is at the basis of your attraction not your words and that's what they're calling the subconscious in other words, it, what's really going on is what you're offering vibrationally. But it's not subconscious. It's not subconscious. We will not shout. It is not. We will shout. It is not. It is not, 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 not subconscious. Because you, you built your vibrational patternings with conscious thoughts. I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm unhappy with that. I don't like that. Those weren't unconscious thoughts. Those were conscious thoughts. You consciously practiced yourself into a vibrational pattern that is depriving you of what you want, and now you're calling the pattern subconscious. Okay. It's not subconscious. It's vibrationally active because you consciously thought it into being. So now, <laughs> however, however, when we, when we ask you to generally tune before you fine tune, and we ask you to feel for an emotion, that's conscious too, isn't it? In other words, can you unconsciously feel for an emotion? It's all about focus, isn't it? So now you're going to consciously feel for an emotion and consciously place yourself in the vortex and then you're going to consciously think even more specific about what you want. In other words, you are the creator of your own experience. It would be like saying, I'm the painter of my own picture, but I always do it blindfolded. <laughs> and we say, well, that's just dumb. <laughs> you could do so much better if you would use your eyes. <laughs> no? I like to subconsciously paint. Uh, okay. Mm. <laughs> well, we appreciate very much you repeating to us the idiotic okay. um, basis that so many people are operating from. And we get why they think that. Right. And there's, we understand how if somebody who knows nothing about the laws of the universe and who knows nothing about vibration, who's only doing what almost everybody is doing, which is looking at the results of what they're getting. And so they've got all these results that they don't want. We understand why they would say, well, I must be creating those from my unconscious mind because I sure wouldn't do it from my conscious mind because it sure isn't what I want. But we say, that leads you nowhere. That leads you nowhere. You've got to be able to make some correlation between where you are and where you want to be. You have to find something that guides you, you see. And the peanut gallery is not the answer. Yes, it's coming forth from within you. Really good. Best ever. Okay. So I have lots of rockets of desire, and they're going 
in a lot of different directions. And then I have a trained or a... They are about, they are about many different subjects, subjects all going in the same direction of your vortex. Okay. Say that one more time, please. <laughs> well, you so said I have many, many different desires and rockets that are going in lots of different directions. Yeah. And what you meant was they're on lots of different subjects, but they are all going in the same direction, which is of your expansion, of your vortex. They're, they're, all, they're all going to where your inner being is and stands and bees. In other words, they're, they, they, all, all your rockets of desire, because you're about to tell us that you feel scattered and all of that. And we want to... <laughs> <laughs> and we want to and we want to say to you that that the vortex there's nothing scattered in the vortex you're sending it to the vortex and the vortex is assembling them into cooperative components and when you get into the vortex you don't feel scattered it it, right. it just unfolds logically for you okay and in a, a practice that will get me into the general or away from the scattered feeling to well, be able so, to... Well, so, so what this sales job is that we're doing here, we're, mm -hmm. we're just wanting... So, so you came right with us. In other words, we know that you understand that it's about attraction and that you've got a point of attraction going on. We know that you know that. And so now we're, we're just making it more vivid because we want you to realize that what your true point of attraction is is in this vortex that's your true point of attraction so you have one singular intention and it's not scattered and it's not hard to understand and it isn't hard to do you don't have to sort out all the all the ideas and you don't have to sort out all the subjects and you don't have to figure out all the action you don't have to do that you have one singular important singular thing to do get in the vortex get in the vortex and we've just been talking about that which and the easiest way to get in well first of all you're in there several times every day so just notice it and milk it when you're in there but the key to the vortex for you and for almost everyone especially in the beginning of understanding this the key to getting in and staying in is find something easy that feels good and milk it and and the, the thing that we have to help you overcome is a very simple, flawed premise that you learned early on and have been practicing for a long time. And that says, I'm supposed to work hard. I'm not supposed to look for easy. I'm not supposed to look for the path of least resistance. I'm not supposed to try to make it easy on myself. Because you've been trained by so many people who are out of the vortex. You see, they've been teaching you the hard way of going about it because it's the only way they know. If you're not in the vortex, life is hard. And so, so almost everybody you know says, well, you're my employee, or you're, you're my child, or you're my student, and, and there is no gain without pain, and there is no success without struggle, and, and you've got to get determined, and you've, you've got to apply yourself, and you've got to work really hard, and you've got to dig in, and you've got to, you've got to use your grit and your willpower, and we say, that's relatively good advice it's better maybe than not succeeding at all but it's advice for the whole group that's outside the vortex and that whole group that's been outside the vortex for a long time has been really really irritated at the rich successful group that's found a way into the vortex who isn't working nearly hard enough <laughs> It's so annoying. It's so annoying to watch someone not try at all and have incredible success. Oh, man, that person inherited a fortune. Well, that person is in the vortex whether they inherited the fortune or not. In other words, it's continuing to come because of the alignment that they're continuing to maintain, you see. Really good conversation, don't you think? Yeah. So, so the the challenge that you have in you and almost everyone else is we have to convince you that it's all right for you to take the easy way and if we can convince you that it's all right to take the easy way and you believe us when we say the easy way is going straight to the vortex where what you thought was scattered out there is all assembled logically in here and you spend enough time in the vortex just feeling good think about think about people that you've heard about or that you know 
who must have been doing something like this in order to find their success. So let's take like a, a songwriter or even a, a, an, a author. Frequently you hear them say, that song came so fast, came so fast, took me 20 minutes to write this. The idea hit me and when I sat down to write, it was right there. And other times they'll say, yeah, I worked on that song for five years. <laughs> never did like it, never did, never really, never really amounted to anything. And we say, write the song out of the vortex, write the song in the vortex. In other words, the, you, you can see when an athlete is really on his game. And you can see when he isn't. In other words, it's almost like he intuitively knows where everybody else is going to be on the field or on the court or wherever it is. He, if he's tuned in, he can anticipate where his tennis challenger is going to put that ball. He can read the guy's mind and be ready for where it goes. When you're in the vortex, you have access to information that you don't have outside the vortex. Think about the story you hear of, of, of people who have found great success like Thomas Edison who was said to take little naps. Well, he just was going to the vortex. He was just finding a way to go to the vortex and when he'd go in there, ideas would come to him because all of the ideas have been assembled chronologically in, or, or, or logically in an order of least resistance. So what happens as you go to the vortex and go to the vortex and go to the vortex because you've now made it your high priority is top on your list. Where are you going? To the vortex? Where have you been? In the vortex? <laughs> what are you doing today? Going to the vortex? No, I mean, what are you productively doing? doing going, going to the vortex? What's in the vortex? Everything that's important to me. Why do you spend so much time there? Getting familiar. Practicing the vibration of it. Learning to read it better. I'm rendezvousing with ideas in there. M my world is in there, you know. My world is in there. The world that I've put there, even before my birth and piece by piece ever since, is in there. I'm, I'm going there because that's who I am. That's where I belong. That's where everything I want is. And that's where the fun of life is for me. That's why I'm going there. That's why I'm going there. That's why I'm staying there. That's why I've made it my top priority. Well, shouldn't you be doing something more important <laughs> there isn't anything more important there isn't anything more important that's all important everything everything good that happens to me starts after I'm in there wonderful so so you said you said how can I get in there what's the what's the process and and we didn't really answer your question very well. We just did everything that we could do to make the vortex appealing to you. In other words, we just, we're just doing the sales job to make you want to. We're just in there. We're in there where you want to be, crawling about how good it is, you see. Just living how good it is, summoning you in, summoning you in. You have to be really resistant not to come. In other words, you, you, you wanted to come. You want to be in there. We've convinced you of the validity of the vortex. Not one of you doubt. Well, there's one. Not one. Hardly any, hardly any of you doubt.